It is important when speaking to those who are fixated religiously to talk about the freedom of the mind, to not be bound by religious beliefs and assumptions. For this will blind you to other people. It will blind you to other faith traditions. It will blind you to the work of God who moves through all things. The Spirit of God who moves through all things within and beyond one's own religion and within and beyond the religions of all others. For in a universe of intelligent life there are countless religions. So the work of God transcends them. And though your religious training and understanding may prepare you for a deeper experience, you'll have to go beyond your religious beliefs and understanding to have this experience. Having this experience will make your mind more tolerant and more able to see the reality that exists beyond the intellect. The true experience of God is beyond belief. Here it is necessary to see that God's plan is to save everyone. Therefore, there can never be just one teacher and one teaching. God has given a series of great revelations presented by the messengers of human history, the great teachers who brought a real change to human understanding and perception. This is because God's plan is to save everyone, and not just a chosen few. For not everyone can follow one teacher or one teaching. God knows this. God does what works, even if it seems incomprehensible to us down here below. Christianity is but one of the gates. Islam is but one of the gates. Judaism and Buddhism are other gates. These are the main gates. There's a small percentage of people in the world who can come to God without a faith tradition. But most people will need a larger pathway with much companionship and reinforcement to be able to make this approach. God understands this, of course, understanding the real nature and predicament of living in separation here in the physical reality. To understand God's work in the world, you cannot condemn the other gates that God has created. But you must understand they have all been changed by man through adoption through misunderstanding, and through corruption. Therefore, the pure revelation will have to be found beyond one's own set of ideas and assumptions about God and religion. If you cannot go beyond this, then you will not see, and you will not know, and you will not feel the presence that abides with you which is all-merciful, which is extremely tolerant, which is extremely inclusive and extremely benevolent. In this way, the true nature and purpose of God can be felt and experienced, even as it transcends your understanding. Here you must be willing to go beyond your religious upbringing, if you've had one, to enter the mystery of your true relationship with God, which exists beyond the realm and the reach of the intellect, which exists beyond the realm and the reach of religious ideology. 
This is the difference between one who is true to their faith and one who only believes in and defends its principles or ideology. To know God is to know the benevolence, the tolerance, the forgiveness, the patience of God. To know that God is not like us. Beware then of the prison house of religious belief for which the world looks dangerous and condemned. Living there will lead you to judgment, condemnation, and violence towards others. Violence either in your thought, but also in your action. To use religion as a pretext for war and condemnation is a complete misunderstanding of its purpose and meaning. God is not seeking the chosen few. God's plan is to save everyone. God does not condemn because God knows without knowledge the deeper knowledge that God has placed within us, that has been given us to guide us, to protect us, and to lead us to a greater life of fulfillment and meaning. Without this, people will be in error. People will live in error, relying upon their beliefs and assumptions alone, which can never account for the greater reality. The greater reality of our origin, our destiny, and our source. Know that you must transcend your belief in order to have the direct experience. In order to step beyond the limits in the prison house of the mind. For you can only be separate from God in your mind in your thoughts, in your beliefs. And the more that you invest in them, the more solid they become, the more restraining they become, the more jaded the outlook of life around you they become, the more defensive and condemning they become, the more resistant to other ideas, other experiences, other faith traditions, and other people they become. It is the trap of separation. Beyond your own intellect, you can escape these limits. But you must be willing to go into the mystery without preconceived notions, without insisting that life and reality bend to your understanding or can be explained by your understanding. God has given you the eyes to see and the ears to hear, but you must go beyond your intellect to experience this. Your beliefs and assumptions can help you to see, but they cannot take you over the threshold. They can give you structure and framework in order to develop, but they cannot take you the whole way. They cannot bridge the gap between you and God. They cannot restore to you your ancient memory of your life beyond this world. They cannot give you what only God can give you. Do not become a slave to your thoughts, your beliefs, or your admonitions. For this leads to condemnation and violence and the repudiation of others. Whose faith traditions are as authentic as yours, born of God, for they've all been born of God. God has planted many seeds in the world, not just for individuals, but for large numbers of people. They have been changed and distorted over time, but their essence can still be found. If you have the courage 
and the determination to seek them out. No religion, therefore, should be truly exclusive. For there are many ways up this mountain, and God is calling everyone to come, to come on whatever pathway exists for them, given their culture, their time in life, and their orientation. Do not become a slave to your ideas, or you will become a destructive force in the world. And this is indeed happening throughout the world today as religious violence increases, as fundamentalists wage war upon the public. The violence, the cruelty, and the oppression that has plagued religion throughout the ages is being demonstrated in the world today, demonstrated by people who adhere only to their beliefs and ideas, and use these beliefs and ideas to oppress others. This is the great risk of becoming part of a religious tradition. Perhaps to someone who's just beginning, they need these structures in this restraint. But to somebody who's going to truly grow within their faith tradition, they must outgrow these things become mature, or they will never know God, and they will never understand the messenger who brought their faith tradition into the world, and they will never appreciate how God is really working in the world beyond the reach of the human mind.